So let's as usual start with the daily challenge. Wow, these are some scores. These are some real skulls here. Well, if, yeah, 17 skulls above 50k already. Mm, a lot of them above 55k even. So something's going on today. We'll have to see what because the modifiers won't tell us. We have good old Tethys, traditional Stygian as our main clan and traditional Umbra as our secondary clan. We start with Boon of the Blacksmith, Precious Plating and Pyre Wall. Thanks to the Protect the Pyre Mutator. Which gives us a pyre 15 armor, 15 attack and 40 health. We also have Heartless on our units, which is not a big deal, it just means that lifesteal won't work. And we have Sacrificial, apply Fragile to the first friendly unit summoned each turn. Uh, not a big deal, Tethys is basically Fragile by default. Um, so we can oftentimes use her to take the first fragile charge and hopefully later on we have morsels available for that. But yeah, seems to be an extremely high power daily today and it has to be because of the cards and relics. And not because of the mutators. Well, protect the pile does help a little bit, preventing some pile damage, but that's that's all. Doesn't help getting flying kill uh, to get any flying kills at all. So, yeah, let's jump into the run and see what cards we get to play with today. Crypt Builder, Immortal Trade, and Frenzied Swarm. Well, Crypt Builder plus Frenzied Swarm is already quite nice. We are fighting Talos with Rage and Armor on Slay. Arcus with Rally and Incant Dark Shard. And finally, Seraph with Sep. Okay. Looking like a decent starting deck. So, what's gonna be in here? Is it Volatile Gauge? It's not. Hmm. Teeth of Gold versus Advanced Prototype. We can't really get a huge benefit out of Advanced Prototype in the long run, but it's certainly gonna carry us through the early game. Teeth of Gold, I don't know. We don't have any backline clear at the moment, but Teeth of Gold isn't really gonna work that well. Let's go with Advanced Prototype, so we have a better early game. Damage spells cost one less, or we can apply Spell Weakness. Honestly, Spell Weakness, Crypt Builder is a good way to get a Flying Daedalus kill. So maybe we can do something like that. We need a bit more than just Tethys for that though. We do have Pyrewall. So we don't have to kill these top floor units. And that's exactly what I'm gonna plan for. I will ignore these top floor units. Well, most of them. Doesn't help saving some armor. Just in case. Uh, can we get the collector? 
damage shield 213 health. So if we get an aggressive morsel, sadly that's not an aggressive morsel. <sighs> Can't get the collector here, that sucks. Should I have played differently to get the collector? I think I... I should have. I was always gonna be able to get the collector on the second floor because we were killing the bottom floor. But the frozen land should have gone on the top floor just so I had a higher chance of getting the collector. You know what? Let's... Let's apply that knowledge. And see how we do that way. Because honestly it's pretty unlikely that we will need to use up all the armor the firewall provides. I didn't even need to kill that... Uh, I should start with sh Shade Splitter. Because that's gonna be useful uh, for taking the Sacrificial Charge. Just double Immortal Trade. It's six lifesteal. Is that gonna be good at all? Yeah, it's gonna be good. We lose most of it right now. Mm, apparently that was not good enough. Yeah, we needed another train sword on the floor, that was my mistake. I thought the lifesteal was more impactful, but I forgot that we had a pretty weak backliner. Need to focus a bit more here. Right, I forgot about Heartless. Yeah, of course, Lifesteal wouldn't work. Thank you for telling me, JJ. Yeah, these immortal traits are actually completely useless to us in that case. Um, let's create a morsel. Feed it for extra ember and then play another train steward here. I think we want the full health one in front. We just nuke this guy. Yeah, this is much better. No idea how I didn't notice that. But I totally forgot about the lifesteal because I just marked it off as basically relevant. While in fact it was definitely not with us starting with immortal traits. And Tumbrasol making of a morsel. I don't see these as being very important to us. At least in Tumbrasol there's some backline damage. Maybe I just take it for that, but I'm not convinced. Yeah, I should take it. It's okay. So, where do we go from here? I want spell upgrades. I want this crypt builders to get some upgrades. Um, What else? Offering token or friends, it's one maybe. Morsel Maker and Crucible Warden. Uh, Crucible Warden could be okay. As a frontline of Artethis, perhaps. I prefer something else, to be honest. Probably going to Stitchy and Banner next. Hold over. 
definitely gonna get the plus 50 damage on the crit builder. I could hold over the frenzied swarm, the crypt builder, the offering token. There are a variety of ways that could work well here. The problem with holding over the crypt builder is that we sometimes don't get to play because it's three cost. Problem with holding over the offering token or the frenzied swarm. Well, the frenzied swarm is pretty much always going to be useful, and the offering token is. Uh, it reduces... Well, we do have some useless cards in the deck, so it's not all that bad to have it every turn. It's pretty good if we have a Crypt Builder in hand. But even then... I think if anything, I hold over the Frenzied Swarm here. Is that gonna be good? I should probably hold over the Crypt Builder instead. I know that I'm not always gonna be able to use it and sometimes I can't use the holdover, but that's not such a big deal. We do have two uh, guaranteed discards in an 18 card deck, so we will be able to play pretty regularly. Like here, for example. Not here, though. Uh, the question is, do I want the Fragile Train Steward in front or in the back? I am thinking in the front. No. No, this is the last enemy wave. I should have the other Train Steward in front. Not being able to discard the Crypt Builder here is slightly annoying. I do want to try and cycle back into it. Oops, wrong order. Shouldn't matter overall, but still a bit annoying. Oh yes. Pretty big. There we go. Energy Siphon, that's exactly what we're looking for. Ember Cash, Mine Collapse, Ember Forge. I do like Ember Cash. Ember Forge, Mine Collapse. Having some more Ember to spend. Yeah, I think Ember Cash is the best way. Get that to work. Called Celia Crucible One Shadow Eater. Shadow Eater could be decent. Still looking at this Crucible One and thinking whether or not this might be the frontliner we're looking for. It's not bad. The problem is just that we will need a lot of muscle generation for that to be really good. And I don't want to go too deep into muscle generation. It looks like we're mostly a spell weakness deck. So what frontliner do we want in a spell weakness deck? Titan Sentry? Maybe God of the Unnamed or Siren of the Sea? Yeah, they would work pretty well as well in this deck too, so... Hmm. I guess I just... I just... Hmm. Yeah, now I have to pick a unit here. We can't... We have quick here. <sighs> Can this be my frontliner? Not really frontliner in the traditional sense, but... Way I prevent the enemy from dealing damage to us. With the advanced prototype, I think so. Yes, we can do that. Not so sure otherwise. Damage shield is not my preferred defense here, but I don't want to spend a 
ton of gold on this shop, so I'm not gonna reroll. Because I don't have units that are that great to upgrade. Monster vs. Bell Rail Spike. Uh, problem with Spell Rail Spike is that we can't upgrade the spells I really want gone, like Immortal Trade. But Frozen Lances are also pretty good to get rid of. And I don't want to get rid of my Train Stewards yet, so... Even though uh, a giant Train Steward would be good. Probably going to the right next. Maybe I should have gone for the Merchant of Magic. But I really needed a... Mm, maybe I didn't need a Frontliner this much. Bit uncertain about that. This is a good setup. Lotus on Totem being fragile doesn't matter at all because it has only one health anyways. Crypt Builder is not gonna save my Lodestone Totem, so I'm just gonna have Frozen Lands. Play this Train Seal on the top floor and then the stronger one here on this floor. This makes two spell weakness, so this is dealing 330 damage. We should cast it. Yeah, that's probably the best target here. Uh, I haven't played a unit yet, have I? I don't think so. So next turn, uh, wrong floor for you. Uh, these guys are in my way. And I hate it. Waves remaining one. Yeah, we need to kill those. Ah. I was hoping I could get a clear shot on our, uh, Talos once, but it did not work out. So the way we do this instead is probably gonna be applying more spell weakness on Talos first. That means we be we will be casting this on the bottom floor. It doesn't reduce our damage output in the end. Because we're still gonna hit her with a Crypt Builder to consume that spell weakness. It just means that we consume the spell weakness later. Oh, no! Ah. For some reason I thought I would have enough Ember to play all of these, but that's not the case. I mean, we can still drop back into the Crypt Builder next turn, so... Things might be alright. Ooh. 
We didn't. I messed that up. I needed to play that crypt builder there. For some reason I thought I had one more energy than I actually had. And if I had I would have been fine, but yeah, apparently I did not. This time we got the energy morsel again. Last time we did not. And now we have a a clear line of effect to Talos. Pew! Buffering that looks good. Siren of the Sea, Overgorger, two very strong cards. But with the way this deck is going, I think it's Siren of the Sea for us. And it's definitely draw, isn't it? The more we have our Crypt Builders in the same hand as the discard, the better off we are. Iron Drop Cage, we could find the cave in, but that's not really that important. Do we just take the Pyre Stone Housing? There's a Merchant of Steel here. Then the Merchant of Magic here, that could work out. I really want the pile stone housing though. Yeah, I probably should take it. Let's get rid of these immortal traits. They are pretty hard to use. Do I need a damage spells cost one less? I might. Yeah, I kinda want it. Here's our chance to get it. Makes things much smoother. Especially in the non-flying boss fights. Mark of Innovation. That's pretty tame here. We can literally just tank it all with the fire armor. If we so desire. I have to decide whether I want to play the Lodestone Totem or the Siren of the Sea here. Or <laughs> the Crypt Builder. It's another option. Well, we got we got the kill on the Absolver anyways. I feel like we're better off playing the Siren of the Sea, to be honest. Alright, I can play the Crypt Builder as well. Totally forgot about that possibility. Should play the Entumbra Salt for an Incant and then Frozen Lands. Definitely playing Amber Cash, offering token. We need one more Ember next turn. Uh, there's a reasonable chance we're playing Offering code, uh, Deep Offering next turn, so... 
Uh, that's not what happens here, though. I'm okay with this. Damage shield is good. We can even block a hit if we don't make that muscle fragile. It's time for the lodestone totem. Ah, should have played that train sword. I was a bit too hasty here. Maybe get a better morsel. Uh, Antambra? I guess Antambra. Uh, how many spells can we play this turn? Uh, probably should crit build on and then kill those two. It's a lot of spells. Makes things very easy. And we even got all our train stewards to line up. Urchin spines, that's good. Um, not liking these too much. Yeah, I think this is a skip. Let's upgrade our siren. With quick. Uh, what do I want on the siren? Higher base stats are nice. Multi-strike would be great. I would even take a large stone at this point. Um, ideally we would get multi-strike. But what if we don't? Health would be nice. Inkank in armor would be nice. I don't think I'm gonna take the shield stone. The strength stone, probably not either. How good will quick be? Not very good, honestly. Don't think this deck really needs that. Let's reroll. Yeah, I said I would take a large stone. I will definitely take a rune stone. And I guess we'll go with an incant. Uh, with a heart stone then. Just so we are done with her and don't need to invest pathing into getting another uni chop stitching guard that's not the one i wanted but yeah this is useless we have sweep tethys i was hoping for an urchin spines I think they can show up there, although I'm not 100% sure. Are there any purchase I want to make? Shade Splitter? And probably start purging these Train Stewards. I will get two purchases here. I guess I'll buy a purge now on a Train Steward. Just so I don't have to make it later. Well, just so we have it already for this fight. A bit more consistency is good. Crystal Cloak is pretty scary. We do have Zap though, so we should be fine. Uh, this is not looking like a great start, but our Siren is pretty big. And we do have this nice Antambra Salt. I don't think this is a deep offering turn. Blocking 7 damage is straight up better than getting 4 health. Do we crypt builder on the bottom? That will mean we frozen lands here. We can play a train steward in the back to kill those two. That does seem to work out. Uh, 
even better. We can put the train sword on the top to kill the collector. Um, how much damage can I deal to this guy? This is just 12. That's another 4 extra from the siren. So we would be dealing 54 damage. That's... Not quite good enough. I do want the health on the siren to be as high as possible. Definitely frozen lands and Bokash on the bottom floor. I do want to play this train steward. Does that mean I pass on the crypt builder this turn? Or do I play Crypt Builder Train Steward? I think we have time to find that Crypt Builder again. I don't want Fragile on this guy. I'm dealing 60, so we can let the unit die here, that's fine. Look at the offering totem, that's good, but I wish I had played the Frozen Lands before. Before I did all this. This floor is dying, that's the most important part. Kinda wanna keep the excavated embers in the deck, so I can do a powerful turn with. the Seth totem when the boss is around can we get the kill on him no not with that at least <sighs> we are drawing into offering totem next turn so I do want to keep these around the amount of sap we can put on the boss this turn is gonna be key. Good decision. Paid off. Hi Nightbreeze. Welcome. Sap 12. That makes this guy not very threatening. Oh yeah, I'll take a Tempera Talisman. That's really good, actually. Spike of the Stitchy and Friends yet Swarm Preserve. Yeah. Some great Lodestone action going on here. Um, I take a Preserve. It's actually good in this deck. And I think I want an engine upgrade. Or can we afford to pick Excavation Eruption? Uh, probably not. Let's go with Engine Upgrade. Sometimes having that plus one energy just constantly is really good. Tethys Scales. This is what our deck does. I think I do want this script builder to up be upgraded as well. The cost reduction probably goes on deep offering or maybe on the engine upgrade so I can more easily play it. It's a bit weird to put it on a consume card. Do we want permafrost on anything? Uh, if anything maybe the deep offering would be a good candidate for that. Double stack the urchin spines. Very nice. I think we also want to cost reduce that. So we can more easily dupe it. 
And let's make this crypt builder really big. And we remove the non-upgraded train steamers, or at least one of them. And I think a shade splitter. And Tumbra salt is decent. Better than a shade splitter at the very least. Yeah, shade splitter. Probably the one that has to go here. Merchant of magic. I think we don't want to buy any purchase. I think we want to visit this merchant of magic as well. Oh, this is a good hand. This is a good hand indeed. Binding do uh, blinding dog shot on the top. Slightly annoying. Definitely urchin spines here. Do I pl Yeah, I do play the Prisoner of just for the incant. And then... Deep Offering. I was hoping... To draw into Frenziate Swarm. Uh, that's actually very awkward now. Because now I won't have these Crypt Builders for a while. Maybe that's okay. Uh, this clipped reflector is a pain. Maybe I don't really want to incant too much. I do want to play the Ember Ah, uh, This clip clipped reflector sucks. I really don't want to deal with them, but it seems like I have to. Okay, we might be fine. That's not enough damage to kill the Clipped Reflector. So I need to draw something good here. Well, basically I need Crippler. Uh, there we go. And we can leave the train you want to get the kill. Sure, seems fun. Okay. <sighs> Blazing bolts, I would like those. Do I like those? Well, we can pretty easily upgrade them in the next fight. They do help with Gilded Wings a lot. I think we want the second stack of spell weakness now. That might matter. Hold over magic power. Let's look at the caverns first. Cave of a thousand eye. I'll gladly pay some pyro health for a relic. Health spanners. Sure. Does have some applications in this deck. We do have an Antamara Salt. Helps us set up. Do we now hold over the offering token so we can always play a Crypt Builder for free? We just gained a bunch of energy. Maybe we just hold over the energy siphon instead and hope for a double stack. Um. I 
I think I do want to upgrade these blazing bolts. Then reroll. Double stack. Very nice. Magic power and Tumbra Soul, just in case we face up Soul Boss. And then we remove the last unupgraded Train Steon and the Shade Splitter. Maybe I should have kept some gold. Well, this fight will be pretty straightforward. Well, I say, but... This is not a straightforward turn at all. We do have extra energy. From the health banners. But we need to survive these wild wings somehow. Can we just zap them into oblivion? <sighs> Not really. We also don't have any draw. We have three damage shields on the lodestone totem after that. Well, three damage, three damage shields is enough. I think we throw the urchin spines and the energy siphon and the preserve on the crypt builder. Right, the spikes. My Tethys is dying. Uh, nothing I can do about that and it's not even that big of a problem. But it's annoying, that's for sure. Um, let me think about this. We do want to play the Siren second or not first. But do we want to play the train stew up first? Is that okay? That might be okay. Are we playing Shade Splitter? So we're definitely playing engine upgrade, probably on the top floor. I do want to try to get out as many crypt builders as possible, but there will only be one. So it's going to be the holdover one to kill this Gilded Wing. It leaves me with one more ember. And I think that has to be a spell on the bottom floor. Perhaps this shade splitter. Can be this shade splitter. But then again I wanna play that after I played the siren. Yeah, I can use the extra ember. Okay. Why did I call this fight straightforward? It's everything but. We don't have the extra ember from the health banners this turn. But we can... Double Crypt Builder with the discard. Do want to play the Blazing Bolts. And I should probably play it on this floor. I guess Offering Token should go out. No. Uh, frozen Lands on this floor first. We're offering token the crit builder. We draw into excavated them. Well, sure, let's keep going.
Really don't want to waste a crit build on this, but I need a redraw here, I think. We drew into Blazing Bolts. It's very nice. I uh, should have played the other more, so Heartless prevents the lifesteal from working after all. And then we just freeze this frozen lens. Why do we need to freeze it? It's already frozen, isn't it? Um, definitely kill the frontliner here. And then start killing those wild wings. Another one. Extra health. Uh, probably extra attack is gonna be more important. Let's freeze the frenzy swarm. That one might matter. I think we offering token the crypt builder first. And then I should play should I? Yeah, I should play this. Blazing bolts. Shade splitter. And finally just cast some spells. This is another ca just cast some spells turn. That's actually the morsel I want here. Yeah, I really don't want to kill this morsel. The extra ember next turn is going to be good. We're almost there. No, this is fine. Yeah, we got the kill. We almost got the kill with spell damage alone. Whew! Yeah, I forgot about the uh, Tethys dying really early in this fight. To the spikes, that was annoying. Cave in. Do I want that at this point? I don't think so. I think that Yoop is better than a Merchant of Magic. You don't really benefit from the Merchant of uh, Steel at all. Unless I wanna get some more. Unless I want to get some more damage shield on the Lodestone Totem. Uh, these relics are not really gonna help us. Icicle Fracture is okay. What's the best DOP here? Is it Urchin's Spines? Double stacked? Is it Deep Offering? Urchin's Spines is probably better than Deep Offering. remove shade splitter on the frozen lands and I think we skip all merchants and just go straight to the boss because we have everything we need to kill this boss that's a decent start we do have the extra M ball I think we throw out the blazing bolts first because if I urchin spines first then we might consume the spell weakness on Seraph and that will be bad. We do daze these guys anyway. Oh, I should have 
play one more spell, but it doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, can I draw here? I can't. That's annoying. No, that's really annoying. Uh, because it's gonna be hard to hit Seraph. Now, why do I have do both crypt builders have to be on the bottom floor, uh, bottom of the deck? Ah, oh, how do we hit Seraph now? I feel like we have to play. Mm, that's not gonna work. This wave will not be the one blocking Seraph. It will be this wave or the one that comes in after. So we need to deal with this wave. How much damage is our upgraded crypt builder currently doing to Seraph? Um, not quite enough. We would need one more spell weakness. We can get that with energy siphon. So we could use urchin spines for something else if we wanted to. Do we want to though? I feel like we mostly have to ignore this wave, even though it pains me to do so. Do have the extra ember, but that's not really that useful. And I can play Urchin Spines Frozen Lands, which is laugh laughably, laughably bad here. It's just 45 damage against this Gilded Wing, which is basically nothing. I should probably throw the Urchin Spines here. Just for safety. We might have to push through that Gilded Wing. Second floor. Now on the second floor we can possibly do something. Actually, not just possibly do something, we win. Simple as that. Whew. I mean, that's an impressive score, but will it be enough? Will it be enough to get in the top five or anything like that? Today's scores are insane. And while my strategy was sound and got me early flying kill, yeah, we didn't beat the 55k. I mean, usually I would be happy to see this call, but I feel like I missed something very obvious here. Maybe some kind of really obvious infinite, but I had a hard time finding it. Maybe consume remove deep offering plus something? Not sure. Anyways, this was a pretty solid spell weakness build. Nothing too special about it. But I want to see how these guys manage to get those crazy scores. Dixie. Six turn boss rush on Talos. Nine turn, ten turn. Damage spells cost less. Offering monument. Uh huh. Okay, so there was an offering monument somewhere. And probably pretty early. I missed that one, which sucks, because I went for spell upgrades first. Ten turn boss rush. Why did they pick a siren? Well, they probably needed that. Hi Alex, welcome. This is, this is crazy 
Hey Alex, thank you so much for subscribing with Twitch Prime for the fifth month in a row. Happy to see you back. Hmm. Let me guess, all of those top scores had offering monument? The decks look very similar to mine otherwise. Offering monument, eight turn, 10 turn, six turn, 10 turn, 10 turn, six turn, but didn't take the trial on the hidden assault. <sighs> Poor guy. Oh, this guy didn't even. This guy had endless on the mo offering monument. Huh. Offering monument again. Let me guess, I'm the f first one in the list who doesn't have offering monument. No, kind of moderate. Also doesn't have offering monument. a lot of damage in the clip tower mentors fight but made it up by being able to tend to on boss rush arcus crippillas blazing bolts helicus i see i see <laughs> so yes the trick was just spell weakness that offering monument would have been nice I would have really liked that a lot. Everyone got, went double draw. Makes sense. Uh, did kind of moderate, yeah. Cost reductions. Okay. Well, that was a crazy daily.